Hello, hello. Thank you so much for following us on the Summer Bible channel. We appreciate your likes. We appreciate your comments. If this is your first time to watch and visit us, please subscribe in order to receive a new video once it is released. Our topic of this week is meekness in the crucible. Meekness in the crucible. Meekness is defined as enduring injury with passions and without resentment. It's not in inherently human attributes. Our sinful nature cannot help but taking revenge when someone offends us. God is powerful enough to transform our hearts and to make us meek people. With this help, we can bear our any offense and love those who offend us. In this lesson, we will see following points. So, meekness in the suffering, intercessory meekness, we see meekness before our enemies, and we see the meekness before injustice, and the last, we see the source of meekness. So, let us see the first point, that is meekness in the suffering. Let us read in Ezekiel chapter 24, verse 24. Thus Ezekiel is a sign to you, according to all that he has done, you shall do. And when this comes, you shall know that I am the Lord God. Joseph and Ezekiel, and we start with Joseph. Joseph was the favorite son of his father. However, his life was suddenly turned upside down. Joseph clung go God in the harsh trials. He humbly worked for his master and meekly endured the false accusation. Eventually, Joseph's broken pieces become the salvation of Israel. So Ezekiel so was also uh, a hurt. Uh, his heart was also in pieces after his wife passed away. And God asked Ezekiel to do something unusual in those circumstances. He said, do not cry. Ezekiel broke and pieces become an announcement and in an example for people of Israel. God can use our broken pieces to help other people if we meekly accept our sufferings. Let me repeat this one. God can use our broken pieces to help other people if we meekly accept our sufferings. So let us go to the point number two. Point number two. Intercessory meekness. Intercessory meekness. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against you people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Exodus chapter 32 verse 11. 11. So Moses is known as the meekest man ever. Although he had to endure constant complaints and opposition, God offered Moses to destroy the people of Israel and begin a new nation with him. However, Moses interceded on behalf of the, the whole people. He also interceded on behalf of his own sister after being betrayed by her. He also interceded with his relative tried to usurp the priesthood. So meekness involves offering grace to those who do not deserve it. Meekness involves offering grace to those who don't deserve it. Very, very important to understand. So let us point, let us see the point number three. That is meekness before our enemies. Meekness before our enemies enemies. Let us read Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Why should we love those who have hurt us? That is a question. Jesus shared one basic reason so that to imitate our Father. God is good with his enemies. 
He loves them because he sees them as candidates for the kingdom of heaven. Precious pearls of his treasure. When we see our enemies like this, everything changes. We see them as future brothers and sisters whom we can share eternal life with. This way, we always seek their good. We are being perfected as the love of God grows in our hearts. This perfection is shown by loving others and treating them meekly. Meekly. Treating them meekly. So let us see, continue uh, seeing this number four, which is the meekness before injustice. Meekness before injustice. Let us read First Peter chapter 2, verse 23. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Undoubtedly, Jesus is the greatest example of meekness. Peter explained how he behaved so we can learn from his example. Jesus reminded the silent before the offenses. He didn't rebel against attacks or suffering but gave himself to God. He knew God is always in control. God will do justice at the right time. God is going to do justice at the right time. Just remember Paul's advice in Romans chapter 12, verse 10, 17 to 21. Do not seek revenge, for vengeance is God's, for vengeance is for God. On the contrary, on the contrary, do good to those who do evil. Do good to those who do evil. So, the source of meekness. What is really the source of meekness? Meekness. We see in Psalm chapter 62, verse 7, we read this. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. And my refuge is in God. My refuge is in God. Meekness is usually seen as a weakness. Meek people are taught to be shy, defenseless, coward. Nothing could be further from the truth. The meekness of a Christian is based on the rock. Meekness of Christians is based on the rock. They stay firm in the storm of this life. They don't wish harm on their enemies but intercede in their behalf. They love their families and friends even if they betray them or hurt them. They put the bad circumstances on God's hands. They know that God is always in control. He is conducting his work for the glory of of his name. He is conducting his work for the glory of his name. So we read in Desire of Ages chapter 31, page 3 of 1, this we read this one. If we possess the humility of our master, we shall rise above the slides, the rebuffs the annoyance to which we are daily exposed and they will cease to cast a gloom over the spirit. The highest evidence of nobility in a Christian is a self-control, is self-control. He who, he who under abuse or cruelty fails to maintain a calm and a trustful spirit robs God of his right to reveal in him his own perfection of character. Loriness of heart is a strength that gives victory to the followers of Christ. Loriness of heart is a strength that gives victory to the followers of Christ. Friend, this is was a really important lesson about meekness. Meekness in I mean the crucible. So we should do our possible to be good to our friend. To be good also to our enemies. That is our strength as a Christian. As God 
was able to be good, to be to pardon enemies, to give them access to his kingdom, we should also help our enemies to access to this coming Jesus kingdom. God bless you, God help you, and see you next week.